Hello everybody, welcome to the 19th or 20th episode of my bankroll challenge and before we start today I just want to explain that um, I've moved to triple eight just in the short term and I'm going to just explain why is why, why that is and it's pretty much just because the last what three four five maybe maybe since the weekend I've been having a pretty bad time on sky and as we talked about in the previous session my motivations it was dropping it was dropping pretty bad they couldn't be asked playing the schedule wasn't great for me um my overall level of players kind of regressed over the last few days and and that's not a situation that i'm that comfortable with and um as good as the games are on sky and let's make no mistake about it they are very good um over the last few days maybe more um most of the players that we make most of our money from have kind of been in the short stack we've been playing eight and l with a lot of people with two and three pound and playing ten and l with a lot of people three and four pounds <clears throat> stuff like that and not enough of them have been deep stacked <clears throat> excuse me so what this means is, is i kind of I've, been finding myself regularly being like restricted with the lines that I can take, mostly due to playing like mul like lots of multi-way pots like we do play on Sky, but with players with like various stack depths. I mean, in multi-way pots, we already are pretty restricted what we can do, but we're even more restricted with what we can do when when you're up against guys when you when you get to flops with maybe twelve to fifteen blinds in the pot, and you got some guys only got twenty five blinds behind. You know, these guys get. Committed pretty quickly, C bets work less effectively against them, all those kinds of things. So, very often you kind of you start playing a fit or fall type game, and I understand that's how it has to be, and I completely get it. Um, but that does things to my game that, that I need to fix from time to time. Um, it makes a lot of for the sorry for the shit analogy, but it makes a lot of like my tools go blunt rather quickly, and before I know it. I end up playing a pretty moderate, weak, tight, not great brand of poker. Um, and get that's how many of the regulars play on Sky, particularly at the, like the 8 and 10 and 20 and games. And that's probably because the game dynamics kind of dictate that's how you need to play because of all the multi-way pots, etc. But um, it, it definitely it, it takes its toll on your game. You know, you And you're playing well enough for the games that you're in. But you're not playing a, a a good brand of poker, in my opinion, that you could take anywhere else and use anywhere else, apart from that, that a live environment and maybe a tournament environment. Um, so like morphing into like a weak type style isn't what really I want for the challenge. It's certainly not what I want for my channel. And um, and much as I'm like more than happy to play an exploitable brand of poker if that's what it takes to get the job done, I also kind of want to be making sure that. I at least stay reasonably sharp. I go through pretty regular cycles. For those of you guys who know me, you'll know this. Of um, of like doing the hard work in speed poker, getting my game into really good shape, so I'm like really I'm fighting fit. And then I take my game to the I take it to the softer games for a while. I'll hopefully, you know, the first whatever you know week, two weeks, three weeks of that where my game's really sharp. Hopefully, I make a lot of hay during that time. But eventually my game becomes blunt and I feel like I need to take it away somewhere to like maybe like a speed poker pool or some tougher games get back into good shape again like just do a lot of running do a lot of work in the gym a lot of work in the lab or whatever that cliche you want to use and just get back into that like, good poker shape again before going back to the softer games and crushing them etc so I kind of see more like triple eight speed poker as my training ground and then I take it to sky on a match day that's kind of the cycle that I tend to go through. So the idea for the next few days of the, of the challenge is to put some hard yards in on Triple Eight. You know, do a lot of laps, do a lot of running, do a lot of circuits. I've played three thousand odd hands today, um, and I intend to to have like lots of short sharp sessions. Hour here and hour there. Try and do at least two two and a half thousand hands a day, probably for the next you know few days and then try and get back to sky after christmas hopefully in a lot better shape ready to capitalize on a lot more of the loose one it's going to be around during the festive period so this isn't like a long-term plan to go to sky and stay there for weeks and weeks and weeks triple eight and weeks and weeks and weeks however if things are going well and i'm making good progress i may well stay there a bit longer but the plan is just maybe put a quick fire like eight ten thousand hands in hopefully do a lot of the work get my game back in shape and get back to the sky tables while we're still in the holiday period while people are still off work while people are still having a good time and hopefully while there's still going to be like plenty of fish in the games because um 
you know, once January comes, people get skinned. Maybe the games won't be quite quite as good so who knows the things i intend to work on a lot in the next few days is putting a lot more aggression back into my game so i'm probably going to open just just a little bit um or maybe quite a lot who knows which might lead to a little bit of spew here and there but um, i mean i'm fine with that it's i've pretty much stopped the last few days you know maybe the week i've stopped putting a lot of pressure on my opponents i've been like going way too many wool to wear pots not been seeing enough questions of people not being like forcing people to crack and over like my last few sessions in the sky they just haven't been haven't been that great you know I've, I've just not played well so hopefully um we can make some progress on that score in the, in the next couple of sessions get yourself back playing to a standard that i'm really happy with and then as quickly as possible get back to the sky tables where hopefully i can say we can cash in so um yeah in a couple of minutes we're like well not in a couple of minutes but i think that's pretty much the preamble out of the way sorry it's taken so long it didn't intend for it to take that long but i guess i had a bit to say um in just a moment we'll be having three tables of 10 and snap running So here we go. Um, I'm not expecting this video to run much longer than 45 minutes or so. Um, I've been trying to limit my sessions to an hour. That hasn't always, that hasn't always worked yet today. I've, I've played one session that was two hours, but that was because the game seemed particularly good and I was feeling good. But um, one of the things I did notice on Sky was my, after maybe an hour and a half, I was certainly that my standards was like dropping off quite markedly, like losing concentration, getting bored. Who knows what it was? Now you get a lot less bored in speed poker because you're, like, you're constantly in the action. So maybe we can build rebuild that kind of mental muscle too a little bit. Um, but yeah, with the my plan when I first moved back to Triple Eight was just like. Just have some really high intensity short sessions where I'm three betting a bunch of C betting and barreling, you know. I'm basically just applying an awful lot of pressure and like really just going at it really fast and hard for 45 minutes to an hour. And then because it's quite intense, just taking a break from it, you know, going away, doing something else, relaxing, chilling out. Um, and then coming back after an hour and a half and I just have like a lot more shorter, sharp sessions. And that's. Um, speed poker does lend itself to that more because it is so much easier to to start and end sessions so there is that that's uh, one of the upsides of speed poker and so yeah, some of these three bets probably aren't going to be like super super great but um i'm just looking to like just create as much action and as much pressure as i can on people and just see where it takes me the plan wasn't to get in like a massive multi-way pot with my first three bet, but I guess I'm fine with it. Am I just going to shove my king queen on the river here? I guess I'm going to. River the nuts virtually on table three, which is nice. We flop the nuts on table one, which is equally nice. And we can raise fold here on table three. Lead the turn pretty big on table one. Pretty hard for the top of flush is three bet me. And then I've got the ace of clubs, king of clubs out there. So unless he's three bet me like queen jack of clubs or something. Um, if he's got a flush, he's got a flush. Good for him, he does actually have a flush, which is quite unfortunate. Um, it's a pretty big shame. I mean, I guess the argument is just 4-bet pre, but we kept the fish in the pot, which we wanted to do. 
Um, if we're going to slow play a hand pre-flop, it's going to be aces usually that I choose and not kings or anything like that. It just didn't work out. Um, never mind. That is not a particularly good flop when we're three bet and we've been called behind. I'm not going to see bet into two players because between them, I think they're going to be relatively pocket bet heavy and of the stack size where they're not likely to fall. So it's not like they've both got 100 blinds, 120 blinds, where we can like put lots of pressure on middle pairs by just doing a lot of betting. If someone's either got a pair of eights, I don't expect either of these guys to fold it. So I'm going to try and make them. Did we get caught by the way down this table with that? Yeah, we got caught by King Jack. Even luck, I was too busy watching my aces get cracked. this min dunk treat it like a check it's fine if we get three bets trivial fold and if my keyboard wasn't miles away from me I would be putting a note that you like min bet three bets this type of board texture because it's not something we want to be doing against him again if that's one of his strategies is to like min bet three bet who knows what but whatever it is we don't want to be like raising people whose strategy is min bet three bet. We don't have anything. Pair and a flush draw here. It's going to lead out. I have certainly strong enough. We can against these two stack depths. I'm happy just to pick the pot up, but if we face heat, we're just going to flick it in and and be fine with it. We can't be in rough shape there, really. A pair and a flush draw, it's pretty much impossible to be drawing dead when you get it in. And quite often you can have a massive chunk of equity against. And there's a big parts of your opponent's range. And we're a coin flip with an over pair there, for example. Possibly even a slight favourite. I'm going to be looking to three bet a lot of buttons. If I had a five six suited on the button there, um, probably would just a three bet versus the under the gun open, especially when it's like less than a three X open. Uh, we have a gut shot here. He's limped in and dunked. I'm going to call with that gut shot, hoping to get an opportunity to steal a pot later in the in the piece, or even better, just turn a seven of spades. That is not a seven of spades. So now when you spent six, I don't think he has a flush. It looks like he's trying to like control the size of the pot here by betting. So we're going to take a punt. And we're going to race here with the intention of bluffing a lot of rivers when he can just have like 10x here and stuff 10 jack 10 8 things like that obviously if he has 10 queen I don't expect him to fold but I do expect him to fold 10 jack 10 8 10 7 all those types of things I'm 
and it works pretty sweet and I think he, he lost that hand on the turn when he just bet six if you bet five on the flop then just bet six on the turn it looks like he's waving a white flag now that's not necessarily going to say that because it looks like he's waving a white flag that play is always going to work because he might be a guy that just doesn't fold the 10 anyway there if he's got like a king 10 or an ace 10 he might just not fold it anyway but um what we do know is we don't we do know he doesn't love his hand and that's going to be enough for me to try and work off identify those spots and then apply aggression to them and, and rebuild my confidence that way hopefully um if there's a regular in the blinds i might three bet the king 10 but it'd be the flesh in the blind i'm not as concerned about going multi-way with it i'm not concerned about getting squeezed I don't think he has a flush very often here. If he does, well, he's going to win 10.2 blind summers. He's betting there for value from like pocket pairs worse than the than the 10, basically. Once he checks back the turn, he's not likely to bet the river with the worst hand very often, I don't believe. So he may as well go like try and get our own value hmm. I was about to squeeze with the pocket nines now if we guaranteed to see a flop for this amount of money then calling would obviously be the right play um, given how deep we are we're not closing the action though so because we're not guaranteed to see a flop I'm willing to make a pretty tight lay down I'm just going to bet my bottom pair that's a nice turn card Pretty safe run out. I'm just gonna hope that he's just got like ace queen or king x or what have you. He just instantly folded, let the queen nine go. Turns are being kind to us. That's a dirty river on table two. Certainly not gonna call a pot size bet. I've caused so many pot size bet lately with bluff catches and not been shown a bluff on anywhere near enough occasions to make me think it's it's viable. I'm gonna lead this river, try and rep a miss flush. When he just bets the smallest in the turn there. I think he's gonna be checking back a lot of these rivers, so we'll go for our own value. Fold if he raises. But try and just get looked up by something. He had Jack 8 offsuit, so he can certainly get the green tag. I changed from fish tags to green tags. Um, by the way, this is because I was finding that I wasn't spotting notes that I had on players with the fish tag because you don't get the little paper clip icon. Um, so sometimes I have people tagged as a fish and I wasn't noticing I had a note on them and then after a hand I was going back looking at the hand and seeing my note thinking fuck me if I'd seen that I'd have done something differently so we're going back to colours and paper clips don't know what I'm sitting waiting with the king for because 
no intention of playing it. Utterly miserable floppers on table one, so to stretch to think you're going to be putting any more money into this pot. I don't want to cap my range on table three, so I'm going to make a small C bet. He just instantly folds. Pretty hopeless slot for our eights on table three. So, I mean, while he's betting small, we're probably going to flick some calls in. But if it starts getting dicey, then we'll fold. And that river's not ideal either. So, we're not put, unless he bets like 10 pence, 10 cents or something, we're not going to be looking to put any more money in. I think I just became way too passive on Sky and things started happening to me rather than me making things happen. And that's not good. When you're playing poker and you just feel things are happening to you and you're not really controlling anything, you know things aren't going well and you know things need to change. But sometimes you just need to change the scenery to, to spark that change. I'm going to bet call it off here on this board texture. If someone's outflopped me with a set, I guess, then I've been outflopped. It's super unlikely now I've got two pair on this board. Having the Ace of Diamonds isn't ideal because it blocks some of the draws, but nevertheless, we're just going to get the money in. If he's got a set, he's got a set, whatever. He doesn't. We have been pretty much crippled. And hallelujah. That bet's too big. That bet should be smaller. Let me get away with 8.2 there. Don't think the 10.2 makes too much difference. In terms of hands we make fold, we're just spending two big blinds more than we need to. Yeah, I also think I'd come a little bit fucking girly and, well, not girly, that's sexist. Apologise to any girls that are watching. Um, and that'll be about three percent of you according to my YouTube statistics. I just become a little bit soft and uh, I forgot how I was trying to describe it now. Um This is quite annoying. Just too much is gonna fall, aren't we? I've lost what I was gonna say now. Because I apologise for my blatant sexism. Yeah, that's annoying. Not going to continue bluffing. Just going to hope to hit our red one. Which we don't do. Bollocks, what was I saying? It's annoyed me because it was something that I wanted to say as well. It'll come back to me. If it doesn't, well, I'll watch it back and then catch a thread and comment on it in some other time. So we've three bet, and again, we got called in two spots. Yeah, we've got a good shot. If no one has an ace, probably just going to fall. We also have the backdoor diamonds, which is useful. Now we have a pair, so we're going to check back flop, check back turn. Probably just fall river if he bets into us and we don't improve. The only answer we want to see is a king or a queen. We don't want to see a jack. 
if your bets were just folded. Did we get called there? Wasn't looking. That wasn't one, was it? Or was it? No, we didn't get called anyway. I think I was talking about how my game had regressed on scale. Now, I wasn't going to use the exact words, but the point I wanted, I was wanting to get across was pretty much I wasn't really in control the last few days. Um, I wasn't being aggressive enough. I was kind of just submitted to the fact that we couldn't get pots multi way, and that um, the only thing that's helping that I just was like regularly just missing flops too, and then just like losing the confidence to fire any kind of C bets unless we had like a really strong draw to fall back on um, and yeah like I said it just felt like things were happening to me rather than me trying to make things happen and um, it's a bad place to get to with poker because if you get to that place and you don't really identify it then um, it can be a real challenge a real challenge so yeah, there's going to be times during the next few days where I'm absolutely going to own myself sometimes through just being too aggressive. Um, but it's a process I'm prepared to get through whilst I like, like rebalance and, and balancing the word I'm actually looking for as such and like the true poker to balance. But at the minute, I'm on like a seesaw and I'm way too basically check back and check and call. I'm putting all the weight on the seesaw and we need to start putting a little bit back on the other end just so what a shit analogy this has been but you know what I mean basically if I have to over adjust and be too aggressive for a little while till I strike a like a reasonable balance again then that's so I, I'm something I'm prepared to deal with and something I'm prepared to go through and I certainly believe that being too aggressive is better than being too passive if we're going to be too much one way or the um erring on the side of aggression certainly better than the other way around um, keep it in this turn because if we're going to put a club out it's nice that we have the ace of that suit thank you any free cards to any random hearts he's got he's got like queen 10 with a heart or something here we don't want to be letting him have a free one sadly pretty bad cards come off so we're through with it need to be checks here we're not going to try and bet we're not going to try and bluff we're just going to pretty much concede just because I want to put more aggression in it doesn't mean they've got to be an absolute fucking nutter that's just throwing a party for everybody just want to be aggressive when people don't have strong ranges basically or obviously when I've, when I've got a hand and I think they've got a hand but I'm looking to improve my play against weak ranges because that's certainly something that's regressed quite badly over the last week or so prepared to get it in here against a green tagged player wouldn't be too excited to get raised by the person we're deep against Again, just going to bet just to keep the initiative on table three. Been giving up the initiative way too often, and then just as I say, having things happen to me, um, gaining and retaining the initiative is something that I enjoy doing. Um, it's something that I haven't been doing. But if we go back and look at some of my videos on Sky, I've been trying to take the initiative pre-flop, and then I've been relinquishing the initiative way too often post-flop. Um, again could mostly be due to 
a combination of never actually or rarely or seemingly rarely making a hand and playing lots of multi-way pots it's just a culmination of things it's not just one thing that's gone wrong in my game it's it's a culmination of things that have just led to my game getting to the state it got into which still wasn't terrible by the way um that game would make me money on sky long term um it just could be a lot better and that's what we're hoping to achieve by putting some work in here Getting the two pairs hard tonight, I like that. And this board texture was certainly going to go for some raises. I want to start getting more after like the, these small open sizes. I think when people pot it or 3x it, they're much less likely to do this or fold. Sorry, they're much more likely to, so much less likely to fold. When people 2.2x it, I think there's times where we can look to like re-steal from them or 3-bet them, especially when we're in position to put pressure on them. Um, not much we can do with the 4 or 5 suit when out of position. Even though we are getting a reasonable price on a call, I think our hand's just too weak. set on table one table three sorry and I hope he's got the ace I guess and go for a really big bet He didn't. Well, he might have had the ace and made the tight fold, but I think it's much more likely he just didn't have the ace. Not a great flop for us on table two, but I think we can take a stab because it's pretty dry. There's like one straight draw there, a flush draw, and that's it. And the straight draw that's out there is, you know, not too many people are defending the 4 3 and stuff. Blind was blind. For the squeeze on table three. Suited the might just have called, but off suit's got a lot less value and a lot less playability post flop. And I'd rather just use it as a hand that's like reasonable for three betting with pre flop. Here's deuce nine. Again, we're just going to take a stab. Hope to pick the pot up. Hope he's just got a hand like you know, six, seven, or something, and just folds. As much as I know that when he's got six, seven, he's only ever really folding worse hands there, but. You know, just again, want to keep the initiative. Don't want to incentivize my opponents to bluff by me, like giving them the opportunity to for cheap. And a lot of these three bets might not be super. I'm not going to pretend that they're all great, but I'm just wanting to put as much pressure on people as I can and just get back in the habit of applying pressure and playing with the initiative and keeping the initiative. Some of my three bets and C bets aren't going to be on point here. But it's 
So we're going to get back in the habit of doing it. And then when we get called on this turn, uh, on this flop, I'll do three bit and then getting called. We're done with it. You know, we've took our short. We haven't picked up any equity on the turn. The turn's not a particularly good card for our range. So we're done with it. And now we just get to bluff catch. Or when he checks, I guess make a value bet and hope to get paid by what? King Jack, Queen Jack, Jack 10, pretty much all this Jack X. Beautiful. It's nice when it just works sometimes. Jack Queen, lovely. Just the good shot on table one, table three, sorry, but we'll take a shot to get into four small pocket pairs. If we get called, at least we have like an out to the nuts. Three outs, three or four outs to the nuts. When he calls, it's disappointing. And we're just going to give up. That's a rubbish flop for the ace king. No real hope of us winning this pot. And because we're so deep, I think people are just going to way more inclined to float, take funky lines, etc. So we're just, we're not going to start like going down that wormhole. We took our shot, we completely missed. Um, and who knows, he might just check back sometimes. Doubt it, but he might just check back sometimes and let us win the hand. Dimson, sure he, sure he was a rock in a previous computer. Nevertheless, still gonna make a raise there with six. We certainly can't keep calling down versus Timson. But um, you know, I'm sure if he's a regular he's gonna have some like weak C bets in his range that we can just try and pick up the pot now. If he is the player remember, he's not the sort of player I wanna like just go call, call, call against with like my one pair type hands. So I'd rather just make a raise if he calls then, you know, hopefully hit one of our five outs but he's going to fold a lot too which is just fine by me not an ace and that is not a king on table two and we've been called in two spots so we are abandoning the mission we get called in one spot we can fire a small c bet but when we get called in two spots it's not something i want to be doing getting a big big price here just to spike a turn out we think we need to call Probably just giving up on the turn. Yeah, when he bets that size, we're certainly giving up. What for four do you suit it? Is it? Let's spike a set. We haven't spiked a set yet. Boom. 
ask and you shall receive oh, looks like Davidson just doesn't have anything there so probably going to be that Not the best of run outs with the ace jack of diamonds. Just feels like we're not going to get a fold, so we're just going to give up. Why is that just gone to race to 82? Pretty sure that's could have been a problem for me. Why did you bet so small? We'll be disciplined. A sweet flop that was for the ace jack. The gut shot royal flush draw, I think just fucking running hearts. Trolling me triple eight. Trolling the shit out of me. Irish man with the limp min race. Let's see some red ones. Please let me see some red ones. Oh, that's a nine. It's, it's going to tie me into a. Well, it was going to tie me into a turn, but not anymore. Game's definitely seen better at this time of day. <clears throat> it's currently just about 1 a.m. in the UK. I played some daytime sessions earlier, and game quality at this time of night certainly seems seems to be di significantly different. Still, know when you were soft as the sky games are, but um. I'd say the difference between playing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and playing at 1 o'clock in the morning. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say it's worth at least maybe 2 or 3 big blinds, 100. So during the daytime, maybe my win rate's 3 big blinds in these games. I think in the evening, this time it's maybe 6 to 7, possibly. That's how it feels may or may not be true it's just a guess it's just like a 
kind of like not bad at identifying how big I think my my edge is in any particular game but over X amount of tables and right now I feel like I'm six or seven big blinds a hundred in this game in this state it's in right now this afternoon when I was playing it was a good examination but um, it felt like it was maybe two and a half three big blinds a hundred because there just wasn't that many players around that looked to be making too many big mistakes Smells just a little bit like bullshit. It's on table three to me. But there's not much I can do because I just got king high. And which is, I did warn that there could be some spewing coming. And it doesn't necessarily mean we're just going to go spewing our tits off by going nuts against check raises in small pots. Like Jack Max is disconnected. Why is there more players? Let's go back to Triple Eight, but there's more players at the Triple Eight logo in the lobby, which usually means Triple Eight doesn't want to say where they're from. Probably because they're playing from a fucking banned country. That's my guess anyway. They're either VPN in and Triple Eight don't really know where they're from, or they're coming in from a banned country. <clears throat> I haven't seen any Australian flag, so I'm going to think they might be Australian. Not folding the ace jack. Should we get a four bet against this particular opponent? That's a jack. Not calling a pot size bet there when somebody's starting the hand with like less than 50 big blinds or around 50 big blinds. Seabet versus the Ginag. Some good turn cards for us. <sighs> Guess we're going to go up with some. No, Queen Jack. What can we get caught by here? 10 Jack. <sighs> this check back's pretty weak. I think I'll value a bit of Ace Jack there, I think. But not uh, the queen's not a great card there. I don't think it kind of threw me a little bit. I lost a little bit of concentration. I had a bit going on here, there, and everywhere. Maybe, maybe a misvalue on that river. Not against pocket threes exactly, but against his range. Yeah, we lose focus sometimes. Squeeze here. Call it off. Should our friend back raise?
was not expecting a cold call. This has made life somewhat awkward. I expect his range to be like tens, jacks, queens, ace, queen, maybe ace, king, but strong anyway. checking try and keep the pot as small as possible on table three we might have the best hand but have a hard time figuring out how i can get called by it worse not really excited about check calling this bet because i don't see too many worse hands and that seven is clearly a fucking disaster card and now we just lose to like jack high Queen fucking three, hallelujah sir, you're getting the green tag out you buddy. And what did our friend call, we just called call with the ace five off suit, um, ace five suited sorry. I can't have that. I can't have that as anything other than green tag worthy. Boards are exactly um, cooperating with us right now, aren't they? One big blind. We're going to lose to like King 8, aren't we? <clears throat> what are you going to do, Pocky Cash? We just three bet you under the table. Be nice to do it again to you straight after. I'm probably going to play for around another 10 minutes and I'm going to take a break for an hour while the video uploads then play another session afterwards but not record it green tag we're going to keep out three bit on the larger side feels like he's much less likely to fold he did though never mind it's extra rush he's just like literally on almost 100 percent 99 percent sure it's just some fucking awful bot never off I'd report it if it wasn't so not great probably still beats the game though i would guess that on a really low level and who knows what maybe making its fucking owner a few quid in rewards and what have you Disappointing that we get called on table two. Once we do get called, it's obviously game over for us. Call called a three bet out of the blinds, then call my flop C bet. It's not a good situation.
not the greatest of rivers on table two well there's 18 blinds left check calling seems bad to me because it just allows me to check back stuff we beat in so he's going to put the rest in expect to lose two pairs at least some of the time here not on this particular instance though because he defended the queen deuce off suit and that's why betting is much better than checking there because he may well have just checked back the queen deuce So I'm already feeling like I'm playing much better. And we've already been doing it a day. Don't know about that. Maybe we've got 4,000 hands in by the time we finish this session. I feel like my play is way sharper. Is this the guy we just donated the stat to us? Could well be. Oh well, no matter. It's folded anyway. I'm feeling much more confident in my play already. Just the fact that I'm just being more aggressive and taking ownership of more situations, not really just calling opens, either three betting or folding a lot pre flop. All those things that make us much harder to play against. Again, we can fetch another cold call from the blinds. It's happened quite a lot today, hasn't it? We've been cold called with our three bets. Not in love with the ace. But again, don't really want to give up the initiative and just give him a chance to just like fucking stab with whatever nine, ten suited or something and just make us fall the best hand. However, once we do get called, it's kind of game over in terms of us putting more money in the pot why would an ace check back the turn and then blitz the river what ace does that surely ace does ace king just bet Feels like this might be a bluff, but what King Queen suited <sighs> his turn check back might just get him paid here. Feeling all Daniel Negrano, feeling all Negrano here, like feels like we're beat, but at the same time, you know. It's from the UK. Wow, Jack is pretty unlucky for us there. I think that's the worst play of the session. His check back got him. His turn check back got him paid there. A little bit disappointed. I feel dirty there. Um. Yeah, it's the first time we paid off all session, isn't it? And it doesn't feel good. Having the ace of clubs just gives us a little bit of incentive to see about this with the with the lone club being out there. Yeah, I'm annoyed with myself there. It's only thirty blind, it's not the end of the world. But things have gone really well till that point. It's still been, it's been a good session, I've enjoyed it, but um Yeah, I'm annoyed at myself there. Is he really going to just lead out like that with a 10, the king? Why would someone do such a thing? I'm going to go for a like, really exploitable small raise here, I think. Doesn't make sense that somebody would do this with the king. And we do have the backdoor clubs to fall back on if he somehow just has a handy calls with. Just fall and fold this river. I said, I'm not, I'm not sure if I said it here, but basically, I can't remember the last time I called an over bet and wasn't shown someone who just had the nuts and I made actually made a post on a few 
various places today to try and get a feel, not for like what I should be overbaiting with. I posted it as like, what should I be overbaiting with? But that wasn't really the purpose of the post. The purpose of the post was to get a feel for what other people are overbaiting with. And pretty much the overwhelming feedback that I got was the nuts against someone's range who is capped, basically. Um, I didn't find too many people saying that they were overbetting as a bluff very often. So I'm just going to start folding many, many, many more hands to overbets. I think we're probably toasty when we get check called twice. I think we're probably bait. I'm certainly not going to go for thin value on the river. I think it's too thin. We get check called twice on the paired board. Yep. Pretty obvious. See, that one doesn't bother me. Getting stuck out or not having people like hitting trips and things and losing those sides, but I'm not asked about that. The one that's bothered me and really bugged me, still sticking with me now, is that pretty bad call with the two jacks. Hopefully we're going to play for all of Ava's stack here. We don't mind if double gets out of the way, we just play with Ava. I guess now we've turned into a three street hand. The call with the Ace King because of how deep we are. Hopefully there isn't a massive cooler in progress. <laughs> no, there isn't. Hopefully we're just going to get to stack Willy now. <laughs> no, the hat's not ideal, but whatever. It's hard to see how he has a flush, of course, but one never knows. He does just have the flush. And of course, that is very, very annoying. So, yeah, we've ran kind of salty towards the end of the video, which is irritating me because it's like it's just been. Um, and a mini version of just what's been happening to the challenge lately. It's just been like a massive mess of like downswing and, and breaking even and just like things that you can't do much about, you know. Just, just at least now I'm gonna be able to quantify while well, we're playing on the hand where we, on the site where we can track our hands. It's now we can quantify you see, how much of it's playing bad and how much is we just running bad. Because when you have the ace king versus the ace queen and you flop the top two and the guy basically just has like runner runner out. So he's got like a once he got a one percent, two percent hand and he gets there against you. But doesn't get there till you're committed. You know what what can you really do about it? Nothing really. But it's very annoying, of course. This pot's too big to do anything but jam here, I think. Very conscious. I don't want to look like I'm tilted because I'm not. I'm annoyed but not tilted, but I think this is just a jam. Pretty 
Pretty good flop on table three. Not the best of run outs though. Can't really bet for value. Probably just going to check fold. I think I'd rather bet the turn or here on table two, table one, then check back and just call reverse. I think betting the turn's a better play. If we're going to check back and call river bricks anyway, it's just not that hard to bet, is it? I think betting makes it's better. I think overall betting is going to be much better there than checking back and bluff catching. Been doing way too much bluff catching of late. We've only done it once this session and we didn't see a bluff. I think bluff catching might be one of the most overrated things in poker right now. Unless you're in a very specific situation where players can have tons of bluffs, I guess. Not a great flop when we get called in three spots. I would normally squeeze with a 10 8, but because of Stouder's stack size, I elected against it. Looks like it's been a good decision. Not C betting the sevens into three players, just giving up. Even though it's a good board for sevens against three players. We're just going to accept that it's not a good situation for us and not one where we want to be putting too much money in the pot out of the first to axe position again I've been looking to 3 bet bluff with hands like this but not against the 3.5x open why would you try to line that up when I can just click the tail button Another three bet just cold cold. That's happened a lot this session. And the least person you expect to call just like flicks his call in. And we're going to hope to get a flop that cooperates with us. And like, does that cooperate? I think we're just going to see bet and whatever. If he's got a pair, then he's not folding it, of course. But check folding seems horrendous, so. We just get it in good and be happy about it. Be grateful for small mercies. That's what we'll be. table scene which is a little bit too good to quit right now so my initial plan of playing a short session and then another one afterwards might now just turn into play a longer session and just try and remain aware of fatigue and weak play started to creep into my game and if and when that does happen be alert to it and get out of there quickly and to set on table one
a good turn card to barrel on table one. We're just going to give up, I think. Been like a ten or something, ten or higher, I would have gone with it. Tempted to just pot it here. And if he looks it up with a hand like pocket sixes or something, then so be it. You know, like min don't call flop check to and check river. It's it's not the strongest of lines, is it? And if somebody wants to be a hero there, then unlucky for us. But the high likelihood is that they're just going to have something they can't really withstand the pot size bet. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how I played this session. Like I said, apart from that one, one hand where we made like a bad call for th 32 blinds or something, 33 blinds. Other than that, like we made another call and River and we beat with the Ace King, but when the flush comes on the back door and most of the money's gone in before then, you're just going to have to lose your money there. Well, at least we had two combos of flushes you can probably have. That's that 10 jack of hearts and the one he had maybe ace few like ace jack hearts 10 jack hearts ace queen hearts i guess was it something like that but um yeah it sucks because you know he's going to have it when he donks most of the time but um yeah i don't i'm disappointed with that hand it pissed me off but um not because of how i played it just because of how I managed to turn a 98% flop hand into a 100% losing hand on the river. Calling two spots, we've isolated with the Queen 9 and we've got a pretty dreadful flop. 92.7 big blinds all in. We have Ace King. We are equally all in. We're going to hope he does not hit. That's a good card for us. No 10 ball, please. Beautiful. No idea what's just happened, but... Whatever. Now, well, I was about to play this hand versus Bob and I would 3-bet against a lot. I wasn't going to 3-bet against Bourbon. I see whatever the hell he's called. Bourbon say. But given he's now been 3-bet already then kind of takes a play away from me yeah so this video now from what was going to be a one hour video is now just going to be however long I play for before I decide it's either the games are going sour or I'm getting tired or you know just gone off the boil because I'm feeling it the minute feeling like I'm enjoying how I'm playing Back the flop just calls a pot size bet on the turn, raises the river. On a brick, we're getting nearly four to one on a call. Need to 
got like 27% equity, something like that, is it? Is he bluffing 27% of the time? I doubt it. Not with his sizing. Make a tight fold. When we pot turn and nearly pot river and we get raised. It's a key factor that I don't think we can overlook just because it's been like a min raise and we're getting good pot odds. That would be a jack on table two, table three, sorry. That would be two pairs on the turn. Be a full house on the river. Beautiful. I'm not going to pretend that wasn't a nice little bit of run good. Not going to pretend that for a second, but we'll enjoy it. You've got to be balanced, you know. When you run bad, you're entitled to complain. As long as when you run good, you accept that, yep, that run good, and don't get a sense of like, oh, I deserve that. Because none of us deserve anything. We just deserve even luck the long term. You know, you're not old. You never owed luck. You never owed a good run, um, as much as it might feel like you are. So we just be pleased about it when it happens, but not feel like fucking yeah, deserve that and bastards and all that stuff that people do. I'm not going to have those thoughts. Mm, interesting with the tens here. We could go two ways. We could call or we could make a small four bet. It's suck if we get five bet, but I think. Uh, I think it's better than just calling. If we get five bits, it's going to really blow, but once pick and just calls twice, I'm pretty confident that our tens are good here. Unless he has like pocket fours or pocket sixes. And of course, he can have some queen X, but Pretty confident in my tens there. Of course, we can't get bet too big because we're betting for value with pocket tens in a four bet pot on a queen high board. So, there's not really a situation where you can go with a large bet. But given how it went down, I think it's a reasonable board for us to try and get a little bit of value with the small bet. And you promised my wife there'd be no late nights over the festive period because it leads me to like spend most of the morning in bed. Um, so I should probably end the session soon, but man, these tables are good. Um, two back doors, nothing much else going on. Pretty dry flop. And we can make a liberal bluff race here. Let's 
trivially easy for when he shoves. Wow. Interesting flop. Pot just seems too big to bed into because we're going to be committed, so. Just going to be conservative and check. We make a really small bet here just to make sure no one just realizes all the equity we like for free with just a random spade that they might have. And then the spade comes anyway. And now we're just firmly in check full mode. Can't imagine too many ways where we win this pot, but somehow we do. Jack Queen off suit. Welcome to Greenland, sir. You may be in Croatia, but you're in Greenland as far as I'm concerned. Pretty glad I didn't quit the session after that Ace Queen, after that Ace King cooler. Because things have gone pretty well since then, and I'm pleased because it's been a minor examination of my mental game and. I passed it with flying colours. Which is nice. Given how deep we are at the tables, it gives me an opportunity to talk briefly about something a student brought up with me the other day, which is kind of, oh, hang on, get back to it in a moment. What are we doing with this Ace-King? Do I want to get 91 blinds in pre with Ace-King when somebody min squeezes? No, I do not. But I do want to take a flop. just folds now I wish I'd got the money in pre-flop I will just let it go he dunked it to two players didn't he yeah I talk about someone that doesn't get talked about very often rat holding if you do play speed poker games and you find yourself getting deep then getting a bit worried about you play or not really knowing how to play deep stacks or just not wanting to lose a 200 big blind cooler rat holding is absolutely fine I prefer not to do it I, I like playing deeper stacks it gives gives me more scope especially when you're playing with that other deep stack but obviously if you're 500 blinds deep and nobody else is deep then it's a waste of time but um, I prefer to be deep I'd rather just buy it for 200 blinds to begin with um, but yeah there's nothing wrong with right holding don't let anyone tell you otherwise you know you, fair enough you can't go south in real casinos you can't go south at regular tables but the way these games are set up you can go south in these games so if you can and you want to then you should don't let anyone 
put you off that. Not in love with my open here with the key now to be honest. A little bit of autopilot. I usually don't open like shitty offsuit king X's. Um, I would three bet. Oh no, but still got a three bet real ginag because he's got two different size opens and he tends to fold when he's min raised. Coming up with the king nine. I guess we're just going to pop the turn with the ace jack and then if he jams, just sigh and flick it in. Six isn't ideal, but whatever. Uh, look at this run out. Can we just check fold now? Can he just have enough 10 jack? Can we release the jack eight? Jack nine, jack ten. Uh, I don't love it, but we'll go with it. I think we're just going to jam against Skinag because it looks like he doesn't have anything, but we've got six high. Feels like it's been a pretty decent red line session. Which would be nice if it is. I don't get massively anal about red line, but I do believe that red line is usually a decent indication on how well you played. Not over one session, but over several thousand hands. Red line is generally an indication of quality of play as well, I believe. bit in the jacks we don't really want to get four bet because then we might be in rough shape given that it's been under the gun and big blind three betting My note on this player is C bet too much out of position with bad hands. So we're going to try and take advantage of that by having a very liberal flop bluff raising range against him. Caught him earlier this morning on a session like raising 8 7 suited under the gun and then. C betting like I think it was like Jack Jack Queen or something like that. It just um I think it's too wide under the gun, then he C bets too much. So I mean eventually if he's any good, which he may not be because of that very obvious leak he's got, but um eventually if he's any good, he'll adjust to me just like flatting him and raising him constantly, but um I'll wait for him to adjust rather than just like anticipate it happening. I just fought for one big blind and I'm a dick if I did. I'm a total dick and I wasn't concentrating. Didn't see about the flop in the bottom pair on that board. Um, no, picked up the double gutter to go with our pair. We kind of have to call the turn. <laughs> what are you doing, Pikachu? What are you doing? Well, f we're ruling out folding. Um, I don't know why I click fold and watch there. We're ruling out folding. And we're ruling out raising, I think. 
We're just going to see what he's got, see what he's doing it with, try and get a good note from it. No idea why he would just min bet the river there. Don't you dare jam again, you little fuckwit. Considering when the bankroll challenges are always going back to streaming and not maybe not making specific videos for YouTube and just uploading streams to YouTube. Not convinced yet because streaming you kind of need to be a bit more committed to it than maybe I have time for. But if there is anybody out there still listening, one hour 34 minutes in. And you could help me out with the technical side of getting a stream up and running again because I've got a fresh computer. It would need to be set up from scratch, including building a nice new overlay. Um, please drop me a line. I'm sure, we could sort out some kind of exchange of services or money for the for what you can do for me. I'm not coming from doing it yet, but it's just something I'm thinking of maybe starting again in the spring. I'm going to keep betting small with the queens just because I think we can have the best hand still. I would take back to you, sir, but my keyboard is a long way away, so I'm not going to. Many apologies. <laughs> and we're just checking the queens on the end. And he didn't have the... So that what it took to make the river value bet. That was a slam dunk value bet too, to be fair. He just didn't have it in him. Puts me in a tough spot there when he bets. And he didn't. Not the best of boards for from his light limp called the button to bed into, so we're just gonna give up with the king queen. Gonna see bet pretty damn big with our flush draw. He call he snap calls. I'm just gonna shove the turn. It puts him in a tough spot with everything except his king x. Even if he's got king queen or something, he's obviously going to snap it off. But it puts him in a really tough spot with pocket jacks, pocket queens, pocket tens. And when we do get caught, we've obviously got a bunch of equity against king queen and what have you. Just pocket sevens, that surprises me. But that's exactly the type of hand I was hoping to make fold. But never mind, it worked out anyway. I 
I'm sure he made a good call or a bad call there. I mean, he made a good call because obviously he had the best hand, but um, long term against my range there. Pocket sevens is not going to be in great shape. Under the gun min race from Ginag, who we think isn't strong when he min races, but three bet from someone who's only got 50 blinds, it's going to fold the tens. I expect Ginag to fold. Maybe he doesn't fold now when another player comes along too. Oh, we would have loved to say it. Never mind. This player's getting the green tag. Every player would tag green, or pretty much everyone, apart from one from Croatia, has been from um, the United Kingdom. Three, please. Nope. That is not a three. That's a four though. And that's a pair plus a flush draw. Action time. I'm just gonna call on the turn now because man, do we still get value? I mean if he's got a king, we suck out a lot. If he doesn't have a king, we probably have the best hand. So therefore we can get value. So that's what we'll go for. And it worked out pretty damn nice. Oh, that's worked out nice too. Certainly having a little bit of run good now. And I'm not going to complain about. But then also play good too, you know, with the Queen 10 there, we reasoned it out and we made the right play and we got a reward for that. So, you know, we're not going to put it all down to run good. Of course, we need to run good to win anyway long term, but um, we need to play good too. If you run bad and play bad and lose, it's, you know, and you want to accept that sometimes what happens then, you know have to praise yourself when you run good and you play good too and I think I played very well this video except like I said for that one hand um, but apart from that I'm really pleased with how well I've played we go big on the turn here with the flush draw and then against this player, if we do improve on the river, just give up. Maybe thinking about check calling twice with the jacks. Then decide on the river based on sizing. He checks back, so we just can now bet for value. Don't know what from exactly. It looks like he's just got two high cards that have missed. So actually, I think check calling might be better. Just giving chance to bluff with like ace queen and things like that. Again, when I reason it out, okay. I mean, I'm not sure why he doesn't barrel the turn there. You know, you've three but the king eight suited, you flop the FD. To me, you take it to all three streets most of the time. And just put massive pressure on what's likely to be just like a, a best of one pair hand at your opponent. Um, 
he doesn't barrel I think I'm entitled to just think yep he's got an awful lot of like, ace king ace queen what have you in his range can't really get value from them by betting I'll review it I'm just doing like a little mental hand history review and I'm happy with how I played it didn't work out big deal uh, if I'm happy with how I played something that doesn't work out then I can be at peace with it I think I should have let that turn. Checked way too quickly there. On hand three, table three, he's bailed me out by betting. I think I should have bet. I'm just going to check back too often with an ace there when the jack pairs. And I just like turbo checked Doug Polk styly. A lot of things to admire about Doug Polk and a lot of things to emulate, but going for the snap checks, because he does, when perhaps we should be considering betting wouldn't be one of the things, because I'm sure that isn't what Doug does. I'm sure Doug doesn't like snap check when he should be betting, just for the sake of snap checking. Maybe a little bit thin on the river here. We get paid by like ace jack, king jack. We lose to basically pocket jacks, pocket nines, pocket kings, pocket aces. Might be a little bit thin, but I think it's fine. He doesn't snap call, it's a major bonus because you know you probably have the best hand. And it's just a matter of is he going to call with his jack or not, if he has a jack or whatever. Looks like Sky may have, Triple Eight may have crashed. So we'll pause the video and give it a couple of minutes to see if it comes back again. So my internet's gone down. It wasn't Triple Eight that crashed. It was my internet. It's been down for five minutes now. So I'm going to just use the natural pause to end the video, end my session, and we'll just have a look at my holder managers. We can put things in and give you like a general update to how the challenge has gone on on this site so this is that session we just played we ran a little bit more EV doesn't feel like we did but um but we did um you know we're running below EV when that when things like the ace queen gets there but whatever ignore that pretty good session gotta be happy with that four and a half by into a thousand hands um to the ports tab this is since I came back yesterday, so that's what I've done in probably about 24 hours now, I would say. I'm not going to get 4,000 hands a day. Uh, my schedule doesn't always allow it. I've been off work today, I've had next to nothing to do all day, so I've managed to get some hands in, but you know, really pleased with that. As you can see, when we first came back, you can see red line wasn't great. It took me a while, and then now, gradually, I think everything's just trending the right way. And that did, I didn't, I wasn't playing particularly well there. I still like get it still a bit of a hangover from what we've been going through on Sky. Um yeah, the you know, the red line's trending back upwards again. I think we've been playing pretty well. Pretty well to be fair. Um 
Anything else to look at? I guess just this. This is how we've been going since the start of the challenge. Um, 16,000 hands running at 10 blinds 100, which I don't think is sustainable, but um, we'll take it while it lasts. Kind of need to go back and remind myself why I left when I see things like that. And I think it was mostly due to rate considerations, wasn't it? See if we can't put rake in here and um it's raking here somewhere it's bound to be isn't it where's my keyboard us dollars rake <clears throat> let's see if we can't see exactly how much i think it was rake related why i went off it a little bit uh, that's not too bad at the minute i think i was figuring out at the time that maybe it was costing me <clears throat> Two money big blinds per hundred in rake, but um, currently at less than ten blinds a hundred, so I can't complain about that too much. You can see been a little bit nitty, but whatever. Nineteen fifteen six three bet. There's a lot worse. And if we look at since we come back, we're actually slightly more aggressive. Not much, but we've increased the three bet significantly, which. Is something I'm going to continue working on. So yeah, it's been a pleasing return to the triple eight tables. Um, long may it continue. I mean, if we keep on putting in like two k hand days and anything near eight blinds a hundred, we'll stay here. Um, but the the, the ideal still remains get back to sky. But um, yeah, while I'm playing well and enjoying it, we'll stay here. When I stop playing well or stop enjoying it, then we'll move again. That's just kind of how my poker life works. I don't think that's ever going to change. Um, probably always going to oscillate between Triple Eight and Sky. It has pretty much narrowed down to those two sites now. There used to be a bit of Unibet thrown in. I'm not a fan of that site anymore. It came out as being a recreational player friendly site and it's kind of got caught up in the whole well it hasn't done anything to attract regulars but regulars have flocked there and the games aren't that great um so yeah who knows who knows what the plan is the plan is just complete the challenge um given this 65 dollars going into what we've already won um where does that take us let me just get the spreadsheet up and see put last night's result in if my last result is minus 30 something then yes I did pretty sure I did sorry you guys can't see it it's on the other, it's on the other screen so minus 25 yes I did put it in so I'll quickly just pull this in plus 369 we were at and that included the first part of the challenge here and now we are plus whatever that is, plus four, something or other, plus 434 now, I think. So yeah, we're climbing back up. We're not back at our peak by any stretch, but we're getting there. We're getting there. We'll take it. Um, and yeah, it's been a good session. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Hope you've enjoyed seeing a different site. Um, any feedback, as always, I'd be delighted to hear it. But we'll leave it there, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.